Breaking news hits close to home for the Fox 11 family. An accused drunk driver jumping the curb along the famed Hollywood Walk of Fame, hitting reporter Hal Eisner, videographer Joab Perez, and other innocent people. Hal Eisner and our photographer Joab Perez were out here to do a report. It's a tragedy that unfortunately too many know. 800 people a day injured in drunk driving crashes. 10,000 killed in 2019 alone. A growing epidemic. Well, DUI in America is, is one of those ongoing and persistent challenges and problems we see. We see 28 people killed each day in the United States. Throughout the next half hour, getting drunk drivers off the streets and making those roads safer for pedestrians, for our colleagues and those injured in DUI crashes. A special Fox 11 News In-Depth starts right now. And welcome everyone to Fox 11 News In-Depth. I'm Marla Tejas. Now, of course, normally you would see my colleague Hal Eisner right here but not this week. Hal and his photographer are recovering from injuries suffered when they were struck by an alleged drunk driver while on assignment. Now, three other pedestrians were also hit. Hal and the others have months of recovery ahead. It is a long road of recovery ahead. So we are devoting this week's in-depth to the problems of drunk driving, drug driving, distracted driving, and its consequences. We begin our coverage with a message from Hal in the hospital to anyone who might think about getting behind the wheel after having a few drinks or being under the influence of anything. That's as simple as you can get. Don't do it. I mean, if you're under the influence of anything, why put your life or anybody else's life at risk? Just don't do it. You know, or have somebody be a designated driver. You really need to get somewhere. There's Uber and there's Lyft. And, you know, in today's world, we have all kinds of ways to get around. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to, you know, put people's lives at risk by getting behind the wheel and, and being drunk. Mm -hmm. A powerful message from our Hal. Now, let's not forget also recovering. Hal's photographer, Joab Perez, earlier this week, he sent us this video sharing his feelings about the accident. You know, just given what it could have been, um, just being so grateful that I'm, I'm still here and I, I gotta be here for my, my family and my wife and my little baby girl. And uh, definitely that's the emotional part of of all of this. Joab is a new father. Now, these two, of course, bring the situation home to us here at Fox 11, but they are far from a minority. Statistics from last year show that drunk drivers cause an average of 29 deaths every day. Now, joining us now to talk about this very important issue are Patricia Riera. She's the California Executive Director of Mothers Against Drunk Driving, MAD, of course. And also we have psychiatrist Dr. Joseph Harazzi, who has expertise in addiction. So welcome to the both of you for joining us to talk about this very important topic today. Now, Pat, I'm going to start, first of all, with you. The nonprofit Mothers Against Drunk Driving, it was established in 19 1980. That's decades ago. So why is drunk and drug driving still such a problem, you think? Well, I th thank you for having me. And my heart really goes out uh, to your family, your, your television family who have been affected by uh, impairment. And you're absolutely right. Uh, drunk driving continues to be a leading, leading cause of death and injuries in our country. Uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving was started over 40 years ago. And while drunk driving deaths have been cut in half, like you said, there still continues to be this ongoing issue. So what we, what we feel and what we know is that in most cases, when people are driving impaired, they feel like they're in control. Mm. They don't think they have an issue. They really think that they're, under, in, they're in control and they, they are not using their best judgment when they're, they're behind the wheels. So there needs to continue to be lots of education around the perils of drunk and drug driving, because it's not just alcohol anymore. Right. 40 years ago when MAP started, alcohol was the overwhelming uh, drug that we were really looking at. Now, when we take a look at the trends, 
it's it's poly use. There are drugs, there are prescription drugs, there are opiates, and then of course there's marijuana. And you mix those formulas together and most people underestimate their abilities when they're impaired. Right. That's a big issue. So it is across the board. And let's bring in uh, psychiatrist, Dr. Harazzi. You, you are talking about this very thing. You're seeing this more and more in your practice. Patients, everybody seemingly, uh, I shouldn't say everybody, but uh, people are having a problem with substance abuse during the pandemic. So what are you seeing and how do we overcome this? Yes. So, yes, I certainly have seen a, a, a tremendous increase in uh, alcohol and substance use and drug use within my own practice. And I see this across the board. I see teenagers, I see young adults, I see older people. Uh, and what uh, the common denominator is the fact that they are stressed, they're scared, they're anxious, uh, their uh, mental uh, health conditions are worse. Uh, there's an increase in anxiety, depression. And so they turn to uh, the familiar things and they self-medicate with drugs and alcohol. People in recovery have a more difficult time staying sober uh, because they don't have the group support that mm. they would have uh, when AA was available, but it was more available, although it is available through virtual meetings, but a lot of people don't take, make use of that. Also because uh, the pandemic has uh, taken over the resources uh, of, of a lot of the doctors and, and hospitals and so on. Uh, we don't have all the recovery centers and all the uh, all the uh, various ways of treating chemical dependency or substance abuse as we would normally do because of the pandemic. So what is your message to people who are struggling? I know that 2020 saw overall fewer uh, DUI crashes and drunk driving because of the pandemic. Uh, but now that we're coming out of it, what is your message to people who are still struggling? Yeah, well, my message is obviously don't drink and drive. And also, as Patricia pointed out, it's not just alcohol anymore. It's also the combination of other substances. Uh, we have known for a long time that marijuana can also impair uh, judging of distances and uh, driving conditions uh, and the ability to uh, focus and maintain motor control. And then the combination of these various things, especially benzodiazepines and opiates, can also impair driving ability. Uh, and our laws are, are kind of lagging behind in trying to uh, are uh, to uh, charge drunk driving for these other substances. But what people can do is, is first of all, remember when you're drinking or when you, you're using drugs, your mind is not under control. It's the alcoholic mm -hmm. thinking, uh, the alcoholic impairment, the thinking that, okay, I'm still in control, I can do this. Uh, whenever you start thinking that way, just remember that it's thinking, thinking. It is not normal. Uh, get someone else to drive for you, uh, get a designated right. driver, get Uber, get Lyft, you know, anything that you can do, but do not get behind the wheel. Yeah, there are options abound these days. All right, final word with you, Patricia. What is your message to people? Uh, you know, my message to people is if your plans involve alcohol and or drugs, be proactive. Uh, call an Uber or Lyft. Uh, that is readily available to most people. Call someone, call a friend or a family member, a loved one who uh, is not impaired and really uh, be a responsible citizen when you get on the roadway. Do not drink and drive. And really the message uh, is as simple as that. And until we can come to the level where we can introduce technology to help us to address this issue, uh, we really have to rely on the general public to, to make the choices. And those good choices involved not drinking or doing drugs and getting behind the wheel of a vehicle. Uh, on the wall right behind you, it says no more victims right underneath the MAD logo. So what is the impact that you see directly on these families? Well, you know, one of the things that MAD does best is we work with families of drunk and drug driving crashes. And so it is devastating, uh, you know, to have an individual who's going about their daily uh, and then they lose a loved one or has a loved one who's injured. And so there are a lot of uh, services that man has available. If anyone has lost a loved one, they can call 1-877-MAN-HELP. And we have 24 hour helplines that are available to help people every day, all day long. All right, Patricia Riera with MAD and Dr. Joseph Harati, thank you so much for joining this special edition of In-Depth. Thank you, and I wish uh, Hal a speedy recovery and uh, Joanne. Mm, thank you for that.
Okay, so we are dedicating this entire half hour to the problems with drunk driving. Coming up next on this special Fox 11 News In Depth, danger on foot. The spike in deadly accidents involving pedestrians and how to keep them safe from out of control drivers. Welcome back to Fox 11 News in depth and a very personal look today for us at the dangers of driving under the influence. Shocking statistics have been released by the Governor's Highway Safety Association that show a spike in pedestrian deaths in the first half of 2020. Yes, despite the pandemic lockdown and fewer miles driven overall, pedestrian deaths were up 20% and even as traffic deaths overall dipped 5% in the last decade at the same time pedestrian deaths increased 46%. Phil Schumann spoke to a representative from the Insurance Institute Highway Safety. In general terms, how do you keep pedestrians safe? Well, the things we want to do to keep pedestrians safe is separate them from cars and slow the cars down. And so in a normal place, having sidewalks is often enough to keep the pedestrians separate, except for at intersections. Um, in a place like the Strip, it's not always the case as we've seen. And so some of the things that LA is proposing to do could be helpful. Um, reducing the number of lanes on the road can slow cars down and can also make it so if pedestrians are crossing the street, they have a shorter distance to cross. Um, things like widening the sidewalk could also be helpful if we're seeing that there are pedestrians who end up in the road because there's not enough space for them. Um, and things to lower the speed, like lowering the speed limit, we've seen that work in other places. Um, things like uh, having traffic calming, like speed bumps that can slow cars down. Um, we've also seen some other places like the Las Vegas Strip that have put in some bollards on the side of the sidewalk to keep kind of runaway cars from getting onto the sidewalk. Um, not something that we see in a lot of places because most of the time when you have pedestrian crashes, they happen in the road. Um, but something people have been experimenting elsewhere in places with a whole lot of pedestrian traffic on the sidewalk. So the goal is what? So the goal is to keep the pedestrians and keep the cars apart from each other. And also a secondary goal would be if there happens to be a crash that it happens at a lower speed because then pedestrians will be more likely to survive, less likely to be seriously injured. So all of these things come with, with a trade-off, I would assume, in terms of you know ease of use. And, uh, then there's a cost, obviously. Right. I mean, there's always a trade off in terms of getting traffic to flow and the speed that people are traveling at. Um, you know, there's a there's a cost in installing different kinds of infrastructure. But in a place where there's a lot of pedestrians around, it really is important to be building things that are um, designed to be used by pedestrians that have pedestrians in mind because there's so many of them there that we really need to keep them safe. So if you were hired by the city of Los Angeles, your first recommendation would be what? Putting in some things like speed humps that can slow cars down. This is something you can't do in California right now, but speed cameras are also something that we've seen be really helpful in other parts of the country. And I know it's something that California is um, trying to wrestle with doing right now. You're watching a special Fox 11 News in depth, normally hosted by our Hal Eisner, but he and others are recovering after being struck by an accused drunk driver. And that is our focus today. When we come back on Fox 11 News in depth, we talk to an LA County Sheriff's Department sergeant with a personal story to tell of the dangers of drunk driving. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to Fox 11 News In Depth. I'm Marla Tejas, hosting in place of our beloved Hal Eisner. As you know, he is recovering with others after being struck by an accused drunk driver. The issue of a pair driving is one that law enforcement has struggled with for generations. But above and beyond the legal perspective, it is the human impact. And joining us now to talk more about this is Sergeant Otawa Kiraton with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Sergeant Kiraton, thank you so much for being with us today because you have a very personal and painful perspective of impaired driving. You tragically lost your son to this in 2017. Talk a little bit about that, please. Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me today. And um, my prayers go out to Hell and Joab and the KTTV um, family. Um, yes, we all know that DUI is ongoing. And my experience as being a mother and 
a victim, um, I want to give God first the praise because that's who is keeping me standing today. And I thank God for the sheriff department who has been a great family and a supporter. Um, but it has been hard for myself and my husband and my, my family. Um, his life, Anthony Thompson, was a CA with the sheriff department. Um, he was an employee for a uh, custody assistant for five years. And on November 19th, 2017, his life ended. Um, it ended where a drunk driver with a high blood alcohol level entered a freeway off ramp and crashed, killing my son mm -hmm. instantly. I have to live each day as a victim because I say a victim due to someone else's irresponsible act to choose to drink and drive which ended a brilliant son, I mean brilliant, uh, young man who just started his life. He brought his first house at 23 years old. He's been on the sheriff department where he's well missed, well loved. He had over 4,000 people join his funeral. Mm -hmm. And to this day, his family at Twin Towers in the Sheriff Department is still affected by this. I'm affected. I have to live each and every day, each and every day, each, each and every day with this pain. Um, but I continue to fight. And without God and without the support of family, friends, and the Sheriff Department, I probably wouldn't have made it this far. Mm. Definitely with my strong belief and faith in God and my husband. You know, it's just, it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible feeling. I can't even describe it. I, I can't. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That, I'm so sorry that this you have to deal with this pain each and every day. I do want to make sure that we know that that is your son, Anthony, hanging behind you. Is that correct? The image behind you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that brings a smile yes, to your Anthony. face. Yeah. Yes. N now, since his his tragic death in 2017, uh, how has that changed your professional life? Because I know you have an organization that battles wrong way drivers. So, what are some of the ideas that you have uh, found to help remedy this situation? Yes. Um, yes, we do have an organization called Families Against Wrong Way Drivers. And that's fawwd.org. And um, 2018, I am the C CEO of his or of this organization, and he has um, a scholarship in his name, Officer Anthony Thompson uh, Scholarship Foundation. And what we're doing is we're bringing awareness for these spikes, low-profile spikes, to be entered and installed on the freeway off-ramps. And um, I think that with these low profile spikes, um, not directly at the end of the freeway, but midpoint, so when a drunk driver or impaired driver enters the freeway, mm -hmm. it will slow them down um, to where as if law enforcement can catch them, they will realize that, hey, my car is kind of going out of control, it's slowing me down because what killed Anthony was the impact, the impact where she was uh, going at a tremendous amount of speed and um, he suffered great head, blunt head trauma. And this is what ended his life. However, like CHP explained to me that if the impact wasn't so severe, it's a possibility Anthony would be here today. So I think that with these low profile spikes it will slow these drunk drivers down mm -hmm. it won't stop um right. the fatalities but it will minimize a lot of deaths drug driving is an epidemic so your final word your final message out there is final my final message is 
don't do it. Don't drink and drive. Mm -hmm. Take Uber. Um, take Lyft. Take, you know, call a friend. Have a designated driver because you do not want to leave your family and friends with pain. And it's, again, it's a pain that I wouldn't want anyone to endure right. each and every day because it's hard. Be you know, just don't do it. You know. Final word. I, I like that word. Just don't do it. Okay, very good. Sergeant uh, Otawa Kiritan, also known as Sergeant Coco, uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. All right, this is a special Fox 11 News in depth looking at the dangers of drunk driving after our own Hal Eisner, videographer Joab Perez, and others were struck by an accused DUI driver this last week. We will be right back with more Fox 11 News in depth. Before we leave you this week, we wanted to share some messages with our injured co-workers and with you as well. When you've been working in TV news as long as Hal Eisner has, you've made a lot of friends. Well, they took some time to share their wishes for a speedy recovery, as did some of our colleagues. Thanks for joining us on Fox 11 News In Depth. See you next week. <laughs> well, oh my, hell of all people, alive and vital and always uh, uh, friendly. We want you back quickly. And uh, I'll give you the, uh, what we call uh. the Vulcan greeting on Star Trek, but I'm in, con uh, in uh, 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 quarantine, so I've added another touch to it. Live long and prosper and stand back. Stand back. Uh, Stand back. From all of us at the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism, we wish, wish Hal Eisner a speedy recovery. Hal, we love you. You're the nicest guy in the news business, and we want you back right away. Hal, Joab, so nice to hear that both of you guys are on the mend. Of course, it's hard to keep a good man down, or two. So take care, heal up, and we'll see you both very soon on Fox 11 News. What the hell? Hal, we're wishing you a speedy recovery. TV is not the same without you on it. We need you back on TV, my friend. Hal, it's Stephanie Caramelli reporting live from uh, my backyard in West Hills. And uh, I just wanted, I stepped outside to let you know that um, I haven't heard from you today and usually you've blown up my phone with texts and uh, phone calls. And uh, frankly, I really miss you.